What do you think, Doctor? Serious situation. Welcome to another awesome video. Uh, I'm not sure of the intro. That was a little too dramatic. Yeah, Tape Deck Trauma Ward is a new series just picked up on NBC. No, not really, but I did want to throw this tape deck at somebody by the end of this project. Uh, the patient in question here is this. The JVC KDV 300 from 1984. I have a question. Why would you throw a tape deck at someone? Well, actually, I have no complaints whatsoever about this tape deck. As a matter of fact, I bought it and have not done a thing to it. No belts or anything, and it works fine. But it's kind of plain. It's not what I would normally do for a project. So the question comes up, why would I buy this tape deck? As you may remember from a couple of years ago in 2021, we made a video about this. Years go by fast. Yeah, they do. The JVC... KDV40J. So this tape deck does have something interesting, the Spectro Peak indicator, which as you may remember is a custom fluorescent display of sound levels and various frequencies. But unfortunately, as we showed in the video, that tape deck was completely worn out. So when I saw this one, it was only $13. I thought, let's get this and try to make a tape deck heart transplant of sorts. We'll take the, the motor and the tape deck from the a newer deck, the cheaper one, and transplant it into that. Ah, uh, okay. Anyway, so most of this video presentation is just going to be raw audio and video of me figuring out how this can be done and attempting to do it, and you can skip to the end uh, for results and audio samples if you don't want to see the gory details, but let's get started. Rated artness. Yeah. This is a problem over here because you've got the counter and the directional thing over here is a little different. we got an electronic counter over here, but still there's a section in this metal piece. So I don't know, maybe we could heat that up, move that out or whatever. But the whole idea is, can we take this cassette mechanism, move it here, or maybe take this board and move it there? I think that'd be harder because you got this front panel too and you got some different buttons. But these two machines have similar DNA. Can we do a transplant? Let's, let's open it up and take a look. Definitely some similarities we're seeing between the two things. Uh, Similar stuff. Uh, so well, let's let's dig deeper. I'm not I'm not discouraged yet. If we look at the dates on the motors, this one is May '83. This one is July of '84. So yeah, this is the newer one. Hopefully they've made some design improvements. The older one has the fancier Spectrum Peak indicator. And let's see. I mean, it looks like this board with all the head wires and stuff. I mean, if that has the same pin out, it might just be a matter of unsoldering that. The counter on the other one over there is actually not a problem. So here's the counter, the mechanical sort of counter, you know, the that kind of counter. Whereas the digital counter is over here, but it's still controlled by the pulley come out. So the mechanism looks very similar. They carefully ran this wire from the transformer around the back on this model. On this one, they just sort of ran it across the front. At this point, we've got the deck loose. We haven't cut any wires yet. You can see one of the problems here. This auto reverse head is just the spring mechanism is all mess up there. It won't it won't stay in place one way or the other. This quick reverse sensor, which I don't believe the other one has, it has quick reverse, which of course is that light shining thing, and it and it's just an add-on. It looks like it sort of goes over to the main board, so maybe it'll just let that loose. And then over here, it looks like all the auto reverse indicators on the front panel are a separate wire. So really, we're just talking about the motor and the heads. Take a photo of that, and then, of course, two motor wires. So it looks like desoldering that and that. So that I'm going to do that, which will take a second or two. That didn't take long. We got the main board, the solenoid, the motor. But there's also a mode switch on the front side of the deck that has several other wires. I checked, and this is also present in the other one. So we got... Yeah, that's that's the quick reverse. Let's see. This is this is it right here. So there's like a little mode switch there. It's a couple more wires. I wish they had put uh, I wish they had put uh, plugs on that. But anyway, so we got about five more wires there to take out. So now we've completely removed the mechanism from this thing, and we've got all the wires took up. So now we gotta get back. Now. We've just got to repeat the process over here, which involves, you know, taking all this stuff apart and getting that out of there. So we're just going to do this, do the same thing here, taking pictures carefully to identify each wire and then see, first of all, before we even hook up all the front panel, just see if this thing can control this old, uh, newer deck. 
due to the magic of video editing, you do not have to watch me completely disassemble the other deck, but that pretty much went quicker and smoother. Interesting, I found a dead fly in there. So what's another interesting difference here, so on the old version, or on the, on the other deck, the reverse mode, as we showed in the last video, is done by this sort of weird uh, thing here. This one's actually got an indicator light, so that'll be interesting to see if we can power that or, or control that, or just we'll have to just leave that off. I don't know. We'll see. So now that we've got the other one out, we're just going to go through, take a couple pictures, and unsolder this. We've got the older mechanism here, newer one here, and we're just going to switch them out now. I'm going to start off by doing the basics. I'm going to see if the, the older mechanism, the older see if the older electronics can control this newer one then i'll try to do add-ons like this like this little reverse mode indicator i mean everything looks very similar it's interesting the biggest difference between these two other than the, the leds of course this one does not have that giant solenoid in there this one does so this has got a massive solenoid so at this point sort of the major surgery is complete we haven't plugged it up who knows what's going to happen we may see smoke we may see nothing. We'll see what happens. We may see the camera fall. This is it. The moment of truth. We hook up the uh, the power. We'll see if we see smoke. Who knows what we're going to see. Okay, here goes. Well, nothing. Oh, came to life a little. Let's see if it'll play. All right, where's the play button? be running as you can see from the reflection of the spectro peak analyzer in my monitor there that's turned off so yeah it's working uh, i'm gonna have to move on to the next phase interesting the counter is not uh counter's not moving but that must not be how the auto stop works so you can see i guess i'll just need to hook that up to this belt over here figure out the front panel stuff i think probably my next thing i'm going to do is see if i can get this auto reverse mode indicator working I just plugged in the old carcass and I was getting like 17 volts on the wire that was going there, which seems like a lot, but I thought, okay, that's weird. That seems like a lot for these LEDs, but let, let me just try to power it off that LED and it, it's very weak. So maybe there's some diodes in there or something that's like stepping down the voltage. I'll turn off the, the, uh, the light here. So yeah, if, if I hook, if I power this, this LED bank off this light, it lights up, but it's very weak and that's the. That's the reverse mode switch. So depending on which road you're in, the different LEDs would light up. But I'm going to have to find more volts for that because that, that just is really weak, just powering off that front panel thing. So next unusual feature is this quick reverse sensor, which appears to, it seems like it just would mount right there. So I think I'm going to try that. I'm going to try just to take that thing out and mount this quick reverse sensor in there. And it seems to go to the board. So if the board can trigger it to uh, auto reverse, I'll just let it do that. I didn't realize it at the time, and you won't either due to video editing, but I just made a crucial mistake here. This project had been going smoothly only about a couple hours so far, but this quick reverse sensor had a longer screw, uh, and I should have like used the original screw or something from the other deck. And anyway, the screw went through the back and jammed a gear, so when I got all this put together, it just was locked up tight, and it caused me to have to take it apart. But anyway, you won't see that due to the magic of editing, so let's get back to it. So one piece of good news is the the keys were easily you know removable just by cutting through the old grease. So that's the original one. So I should be able to put the new keys in here and they're generally in the same uh, area. This is actually bigger. This is I think part of the metal. So I could pop this part out but I still have that to deal with. This has electronic reverse mode where this doesn't so that's going to be a little weird. Like, I could try to get that whole thing out. I may just do that, just see what I'm working with here, because I may be able to, like, have, you know, use it as a display or whatever. This is all one piece in the newer model. Really, I mean, I could just leave that in there and just have it non-functional, because it will auto-reverse. You can always flip the tape. If I could shift this up, really all I need is that. But, of course, that may not, that probably won't hit the... So, I don't know. Let's see, do I, do I get out the Dremel tool and start hacking? That's going to look like crap. So. so more editing here. I talked myself into it. I hacked that panel apart, like above the reset button, got it to where I thought it could look, at, look neat, and maybe even uh, link it to the uh, mechanism behind the scenes and hide it with the JVC logo, and it wasn't deep enough. I couldn't push the cover on with that there. So I went back to the original panel because I wasn't sure if the back would hold together if I cut it, and I lost some functionality. 
Okay, so we're about the point where we're going to put it back together. Got some stuff we didn't use. We got this nice digital uh, counter thingy that, that nobody will ever see, the, the auto reverse mode indicator. We've got the uh, quick reverse sensor just sort of buried in there because that caused problems. The counter actually works. The digital counter was the easy part. Uh, you see it? It still works. And it is held in place by this clever little block of wood back here. And uh, everything else, let's put it back together and see how it sounds. So now we're going to listen to some audio samples of actual recordings made on this machine, which is, of course, the KD V40 electronics with the KD V300 transport. We're going to listen to some FM recordings and a digital recording from the YouTube audio library. And where possible, I will try to synchronize the display to the audio. <laughs> I'm Casey Kasem. Three songs jumped 10 notches this week. Crying by Don McLean, Woman by John Lennon, and at number eight this week, Nine to Five by Dolly Parton. Cool in the gang with Celebration. This week it moves from number 12 all the way up to number three on American Top 40. Coming up, the two biggest hits in the USA. Casey's Coast to Coast. The Venture X card from Capital One gives you premium travel benefits. Perfect for seeing Taylor Swift the Eras Tour. So in the end, the transplant was a success in that it brought this thing back to life, but what quality of life? It doesn't sound that great, and uh, you know, this deck is, the mechanism is just a pain. I wouldn't recommend working on it, but it is interesting. You know, you wouldn't see a custom vacuum fluorescent display. Nowadays, all these meters would probably just be drawn with software, so it is kind of unique in that respect. So in the end, would I do this experiment again? Maybe not. I mean, the, 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 you know, this tape deck wasn't going anywhere. And so it was an interesting learning experience. And uh, anyway, that's about it. And we'll see you next time. We'll see you next time for another awesome video. Thanks a lot. At number one on the soul chart, Fantastic Voyage by Lakeside. At number one on the country chart, I Feel Like Loving You Again by T.G. Shepard. And at number one on the LP chart for the sixth week in a row, Double Fantasy by John Lennon and Yoko Ono. And on the pop singles chart, there's a song with a line in its lyric that goes, I'm gonna be your number one. And what do you know? The new number one song in America this week is The Tide is High by Blondie.